this one up because I have a uh, a bit of a dissenting opinion, I think, today for the college football fix. We'll talk a little Billy Napier at Florida. Yeah, Billy Napier in a rather innocent press conference had one particular line that uh, stood out to me and a lot of people. Uh, obviously, as every coach is, he was asked about NIL and bidding wars and the collectives and all that. And his response was, quote, I think there is some of that, but we don't operate that way. I think NIL is a portion of the decision, right? I think a lot of times when you really uh, dig into why the player is leaving, where he's at, there are other factors. All these situations are case by case. You've got to evaluate each situation independent of all the others. Now, of course, obviously the, the money line is uh, we don't operate that way. So, one, I don't believe that. And you shouldn't either. I, I actually heard an interview with Billy Napier over the weekend. It was on one of the Sirius XM shows, and they were replaying it on the, the Saturday or the Sunday morning college football show that Barrett Sully hosts with Tom Luganville. And... I thought it was a really insightful answer because, again, he was asked about NIL and the role that that plays and whatever, and and he talked about how, you know, 15 years ago he would not have been in favor of what we're doing now, but the game has changed, the landscape has changed. But sometimes when coaches keep talking, they'll tell you what they really think. And Billy Napier did that because he kept on talking. And he's not a guy that says a whole lot, right? I mean, he is he is absolutely from the Nick Saban school. He answers things in coach speak, but he said, but look, he said, NIL's part of the game, and we're going to be just fine. Our setup here at the University of Florida is as good as there is anywhere in the country. We're going to follow the rules that are set forth by the NCAA, and the laws that are set by the state of Florida. But I can guarantee you, with 55,000 students and 487,000 living alumni, NIL is not a problem at all at the University of Florida. That's a better answer. That, I thought, was a spectacular answer. And I was like, yeah. And, you know, he he was talking. I, I don't know that Lane Kiffin sent bullet points out to other coaches, like, hey, here's how you answer this following his interview, but it was like he had read Ross Dellinger's story in the one-on-one with Lane Kiffin because he talked about, you know, it's like free agency, except for the fact that you don't have a salary cap. And unless you've already got a transfer, you've got a team that's full of free agents. And the only way you balance this thing is with a salary cap. But if there's a salary cap, then guess what? Um, You're going to get sued. And and so that's not going to be put into place. And, you know, he, he talked about a lot of the same things that Lane Kiffin said in that interview with Ross Dellinger last week. And then he wrapped it up with what I said just a second ago. He's like, look, man, whatever the rules are, we're going to follow them. But name, image, and likeness is not an issue at the University of Florida. We are. Okay, then. Thank you. It's not going to be, you know, anything that's made public, but athletic directors are going to start having sit-downs. And by that same token, from the other side, because you're talking about that's the boss of the football coach, assistant coaches and recruiting staff are going to sit down with their head coach and be like, you have to start pushing that we have great NIL opportunities here at our university. Because when you go out there and you say publicly that, oh, we're not involved in NIL, we, you know, we're, that's not how we recruit. We recruit the old fa-. What you're saying to these kids is we don't have NIL opportunities for you here. You might want to look elsewhere. Especially at schools, you know, Texas A and M is one thing, a big school, but at smaller schools, coaches have got to get their arms around this and say, there are plenty of great NIL opportunities at Mississippi State, at Ole Miss, at Southern Mississippi. You have to be proactive in that and start telling kids up front, publicly, when they're asked that question, yes, you can make that money here, and on top of that, you get to play in the SEC, you get to, you know play with some of the best players in the country, you have a great chance to go to the NFL. So, yes, you, you, you said a second ago. I mean, 
Jimbo denies it. Other people say it's true. $30 million recruiting class. That's probably exaggerated. But Texas A&M threw a lot of money at it. Georgia's throwing a lot of money at it. Texas is going to throw a lot of money at it. But I don't think you've got to be at a spot where you're throwing out a bunch of million-dollar NIL deals to get good players. No. It's not what you got to do. But you've got to have a system in place – that allows you to be able to say to kids that are coming in, you're going to be taken care of. And guess what? 10, 15, 20, 25 thousand dollars? That's real money. And when you take a kid, young man, that goes to Mississippi State or goes to Ole Miss and is on a full scholarship, and is getting cost of attendance money and may or may not be eligible for a Pell Grant and is getting Austin money and is getting all the extra stuff. And so before they do an NIL deal, they've got an extra ten to $20,000 of cash in their pocket. And then you can do a name image likeness deal in the way that it was intended to put an extra twenty to $50,000 a year in a player's pocket, you're talking about a lot of money for an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old. A lot of money. I mean, think about it like this. If we were talking about cheating, and I said, oh, yeah, that player, they had to give him $25,000, you would not bat an eyelash, right? Yeah. You're like, it happens. That's 25 grand. That's probably actually a good deal for a four star player, five star player. So, why is it any different if you give them the NIL deal for that much? It's not. And look, when, when the cheating was happening, was happening. What? 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 More times than not, when it was happening in an efficient way, it was along the lines of, yeah, there's some upfront money for you to sign, but it's not generally an egregious amount of money. And then you get taken care of once you're on campus. Right. Whatever that number was, $500 a month, $5,000 $5,000 a month. I don't think there were many $5,000 a month deals. But a few hundred from, bucks uh, the, a month extra cash was a difference maker. What was it from the SMU 30 for 30? You have a payroll to meet. That's kind of what it was. Yeah. I just hope, you know how people say it only takes one. All it takes is one. Maybe we're going to start seeing that here. Because the, the quote that I read from On3 did not tell the whole story about Billy Napier. The, the one that you relayed, it's refreshing honesty. Like, hey, we're good. You still got to do other recruiting, but we got collectives. We're good. Maybe the sport's going to start becoming more honest. Because everybody's been so full of crap for so long. Maybe all it takes is... You know, the brash Lane Kiffin at not SEC power, but still an SEC school Ole Miss saying, hey, look, all these kids want money. They should get it. They all want it. That's recruiting. Let's be honest here to get other coaches to be like, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it's been. We'll figure it out. We're good. And everybody will start being honest about the sport. Coaches are nothing if not copycats, right? We know that in every – every now – Are there a bunch of coaches that are going to start trying to copycat Lane Kiffin? No. But they do see the way people react when Lane Kiffin talks openly. And they're like, that was a pretty good reaction there. Maybe maybe being honest, maybe there's something to that. That's your college football fix.